Let's talk about conditional probability. If I can't calculate the probability of passing my probability test, does that mean there's a low probability I'll pass? <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe, <laughs> probably. Uh, okay, so let's look at conditional probability. What does this mean? We're going to be looking at the probability of something happening given that you're told that something else already occurred. Okay, so you're going to be told that's why it's conditional, right? There's a condition. So probability of something happening knowing that something else already happened first. This is the key thing. Luckily, we have an equation for this. We just have to get used to the symbols that are used here. So it goes like this, probability of A, and we're gonna write this, look at this line here. This means given that B already happened. Okay, this is the key thing here. This right here, what this means, let's write it down like this. This is the probability of A, prob of A, given, this is the important thing, given, that B already happened. Okay, this is really the key to it. And in fact, although this equation looks complicated, this is the key to it right here, just knowing this. Probability of A given that B already happened. Once you know this, then you can know to use this equation here. So it equals, and let's just look at what it says here. It says probability of A and B, so I'm writing it like this, divide that by probability, whoa, that's a bad division. There we go, probability of B. This is the equation, this is what we need here. So let me first of all just write it, uh, here, I'll tell you this. You get this on your formula booklet, so that's nice to know. So you don't have to memorize this. This you get, so that's good to know. So what do these things mean? Well, this right here, remember what this symbol right here means? This is a probability of A and B occurring. So this is probability of A and B occurring. And this is just probability of B. So this is how we do it in general here. So probability of B. Okay, prob of B. This is the key to doing this. So if we're asking a question, we say, what's the probability of A happening given that B already happened? Then you write it like this, probability of A. And when I write this, I think probability of A given B. That's how I say it to myself. So I say probability of A given B is always the probability of the two things happening together. So probability of A and B. And we divide by the second one here. So probability of B. That's it. So this is how we're going to use this. Now, we're going to use these a lot um, later. So I've got some other videos I'm going to show you with Venn diagrams and tree diagrams, things like that. So we're going to actually use this a ton. Uh, so just introducing it now is not so hard because we're just going to we're just going to keep using it so that you get familiar with it. A lot of students really struggle with this, but I think as long as you decode this, these are actually dead easy. You just got to look at probability of A given B is just A and B over B. That's it. So these are common on multi-part questions. So let's say you get a long question on, I don't know, paper one or two, but like, you know, at the end of your paper one or two, um, you get a, a long question with lots of parts. Very often they're gonna have a part where you have to do this. And the cool part is, um, often you have to use what you've already found. So very likely they've already ha asked you to find something you needed up top or maybe on the bottom. So usually you've already done the work you needed to do. You just had to recognize it. So this is the key here. So let's do an example. I like this one, lazy person number fact. You're too lazy to read that number. <laughs> Got me there. All right, so we have an example here. 70% of my friends like chocolate ice cream. And 35% of my friends like chocolate and vanilla. So what's the probability of choosing a friend who likes vanilla given that they also like chocolate? So a lot of these questions, the, the key part is just to decode what they're asking for. So what, what does this tell me? Well, this tells me that probability of C, I'm gonna call C for chocolate, okay? And I'll say like maybe V for vanilla. Okay, so maybe I'll write that down. So chocolate, I'll call that C. I'll say vanilla, I'll call that V, just so that it's gonna be simpler for me here. So probability of chocolate is 0 0.7, because that's what 70% is, right? Divide by 100, decimal moves over, boom. What is this? 35% of my friends like chocolate and vanilla. What does this mean? Probability of chocolate and vanilla. Remember, that's a symbol for and. It looks like a little A, except you remove that little stick there. So probability of chocolate and vanilla, that equals 0 0.35. Do you see what I've done? I've decoded this piece, because this is what I need for the equations. 
Now, what are we asking for here? We want, what do we want? We want probability of choosing a friend who likes vanilla. So I want probability of vanilla given, oh, that means I do this, given that they also like chocolate. Do you see what I'm doing? I want this, probability of vanilla and uh, given chocolate. Well, I'm gonna use that formula. So let's use it. Probability of something given something else is equal to the probability of the two things occurring together divided by the probability of the second thing. I'm using this equation, right? Probability of A given B is A and B over B. Probabilities, of course. So, probability of V given C is V and C over C. All we gotta do then is just put the numbers in. Do you see, it's, it's actually really not that hard. So that's the key, I just wanna show you, the key to a lot of these questions is just decoding it. So, that means the probability of vanilla given chocolate, right? equals probability of, let's see, vanilla and chocolate. Oh, I have that here. Look, C and V is the same as V and C. So that's 0 0.35. All that divided by probability of chocolate, which is 0 0.7. I just do that on my calculator. That's all I need to do. So 0 0.35 divided by 0 0.7. I get 0.5. So there we go. It's 50% likely. So what that tells you is if you're told that someone already likes chocolate, the probability of them liking vanilla is actually 50%. There you go, so that's how we can do these. You see it's not nearly so bad as you might think, you just gotta decode the question. I like to write down the symbols I'm gonna use, you write down the things that you know, so if it's an and, put the and symbol, if it's an or, put the or symbol, and then just figure out what you need. Use that equation, that's it.